very useful. Nipple cream. Even bigger pads. Stuff happens during labor. This here is tiny. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Let's talk about labor. Whew. <laughs> I am nearing the end of my pregnancy. This is my first pregnancy. It's gonna be my first baby. If you've been following along with my pregnancy journey, then you may know that I was told at my 20 week scan, the anatomy scan for baby, that I had placenta previa, which means that my placenta was lying very close to the cervix, which is a risk during birth as the placenta can get damaged, um, which is dangerous for mom and baby. Now, most of the time, luckily, a low lying placenta that early in the pregnancy fixes itself. <laughs> As the uterus grows throughout pregnancy, the placenta grows with it and kind of moves away from the cervix. So I was told to have another scan at 32 weeks. I have had the scan now and luckily the placenta has moved well out of the way, which means that unless something else pops up, between now and then, I am cleared for a home birth, which is fantastic because I was really, really hoping to try a home birth. I live in the Netherlands and home births are an option here. You can have one if you wish. And if you meet the criteria, the criteria being mom and baby have to both be healthy, you have to have a low risk pregnancy, the baby has to be in the right position and the baby has to be full term. And then if anything comes up during the birth itself, there chances are you will still be transferred to a hospital. But since since this is such a small and densely populated country, hospitals are nearly always very close. I personally live 10 minutes from the nearest hospital. That's a really nice and reassuring thought. And with that in mind, I personally would feel much more comfortable uh, giving birth at home if possible. So there are certain things that you need to do to prepare for a home birth. Since I am nearing the end of my pregnancy, it's time to start doing those things and preparing. So I thought I would take you along with me. I thought maybe some of you might find this interesting. Uh, I have many, many international viewers and this may be completely different to how things are done in your country. So I thought it'd be fun to share. Let's actually begin with some unboxings. Now, firstly, I have this gigantic box here, truly a giant box of equipment that I need to have in order to be able to have this home birth. This is also stuff that is used for postpartum, the first week of postpartum. I mentioned before that in the Netherlands, we have this system where everyone who has given birth gets a postpartum nurse at home for the first week uh, to help out with the baby, medical checkup, and just getting you settled into a routine. And they have certain requirements for your home as well. These things are mandatory as they are needed for the medical personnel to be able to do their jobs. They are also covered by health insurance. So all of this for me personally is free or covered by my health insurance. So the first and most important thing I have here are bed raisers. The bed has to be a certain height, again, just for the postpartum nurse and the midwife to be able to do their job safely. So um, we're gonna have to put <laughs> the bed where I plan to give birth on these so that it is at the proper height. I'm obviously not gonna be able to do that by myself, so I'm gonna have to ask my husband to help with that. Yeah, I think it's about time we get on that. So I have a bunch of those. Then we have this thing, which you can put up in your bed um, so that you can sit up a bit more straight in the bed. Then we have, <laughs> maybe I should have stood up for this, a shower stool. This is gonna make showering postpartum and perhaps during labor even so much easier. So came with that. We're gonna pop that in the bathroom um, once it's time. <laughs> then I have some smaller things here. A bedpan. You know, stuff happens during labor and um, this deals with that. <laughs> These little trays that are meant uh, for vomit. And this I'm fairly sure is a mattress cover. So everything aside from the mattress cover and these little trays is borrowed and we will have to return. So we're definitely keeping this giant box and um, yeah, we'll have to return that after labor. So that's all the really large stuff. And then I have another box full of smaller medical equipment that is, once again, you're required to have this at home, uh, regardless of whether you're having a home birth or a hospital birth, because this is also meant for postpartum and for the postpartum nurse to take care of you and baby. So um, let me do a little unboxing here as well. We have some pads. There is cotton wool. Then we have these little um, mesh panties. 
swabs, non-woven swabs, a leak-proof mattress cover, very useful, and another leak-proof mattress cover. What's the difference? Oh, I think this is a mattress cover and this is like an absorbent pad that goes on top. A little bottle of alcohol and some hand sanitizer. Then we have bed pads, so these go under the pelvic area to again uh, just protect the bed. This is just a packet of swabs. Two cord rings to tie off the umbilical cord once baby is born. And then there are two packets of even bigger pads. These are like the proper postpartum um, pads. So all of that came in this box and I'm gonna leave it in the box. They actually prefer for it to stay in the box so that they, so that it's all in one place and they know where to find it once labor starts. So let me just pop all of that back. Now, aside from all of that mandatory stuff, of course, there are some things that I want to do just for myself as well to prepare for labor, delivery and postpartum. I actually got myself this basket. It's right here next to my nursing chair that I'm currently sitting in. But yeah, it's this nice canvas basket that I'm planning to fill with all of the stuff that I will need postpartum. So we're gonna do that together in this video. You know how people have like these nursing caddies or postpartum caddies? I'm doing uh, the more minimalist version of that and this is gonna be mine. So I think it'll be really nice to just have one thing to grab and carry around around the house. Like wherever baby is, this thing is also gonna be there. It's gonna have a bunch of nursing stuff, stuff for baby, it's gonna be great. And then also my hospital bag. As I mentioned, even though I would really like to have a home birth, chances are I will still end up at the hospital. I believe almost half of the women who try a labor at home um, end up going to the hospital after all. So definitely a scenario I need to consider and prepare for. So we're gonna pack a hospital bag. And then the last thing we need to do to prepare is uh, some pain relief. Since I won't be at a hospital, I won't have access to pain medication and medical forms of pain relief, so I have to take care of that myself. And um, there are two things I'm considering at the moment. I would really love to have a water birth and a birthing pool and also potentially a TENS machine. Obviously these can't be used at the same time, but I think I would really enjoy using a TENS machine when I'm not in the bath and I mean labor can take a very long time, so I think it'd just be nice to have these options, see if I can rent one somewhere. And I know that they are for rent online, so I'll just have to go ahead and do that. So, okay, plenty to do. Let's get started. Let's pack my little caddy here. So I'm gonna start with a bunch of muslins because apparently these are lifesavers and very, very necessary. <laughs> so I have some of the smaller ones here. All the big ones are in here, by the way, but I'm gonna keep those in the nursery. This is just the stuff that I want to have on hand at all times. I'm not gonna make like a full changing kit or anything in here. Just, you know, so that I have something. But I think these could be handy to wipe or cover all sorts of things. I think it would be good to have an extra diaper in here. I'm just gonna do the inner diaper because um, if there's a bigger incident, <laughs> then we're just gonna come up here to the changing table and do the whole change. But yeah, one extra spare diaper, perhaps the wet bag as well so that I can store the dirty diaper. This is the wet bag that we'll be using. So we have a mini portable changing station there. My stuff. <laughs> so first of all, I have this uh, heat and cooling pad for postpartum. That's definitely going in there. I have these washable nursing pads. Those are definitely going in. Nipple cream. That can go in there as well. Definitely a water bottle. I'm gonna add some snacks. I wanna take a whole day, at least one full day, to meal prep a bunch of food. I'm gonna do snacks as well so that I have something healthy to munch on while breastfeeding. But for now, just <laughs> some pre-made snacks from the store. I'm gonna pop my e-reader in here. I feel like that might be useful. And also my headphones. In case I want to watch a video and not blast any baby's ear. Maybe I can keep this with the snacks actually. Keep it compact. A hair clip and a hair tie. I'm gonna pop the package of the smaller pads in here. I think the big ones I'm just gonna keep in the bathroom. Add a little toy for baby. <laughs> now there's a lot of room in here. I was actually expecting this might be a bit small, but everything that makes sense to me to keep in here is in here now. All of the other necessities I think I'll just spread throughout the house to the places where they will be need. Again, we have a changing station here, so all the diaper stuff is here. I wanna keep all my 
most of my personal care stuff just in the bathroom. I might want to add a little bit more like medication for myself. Um, so something to help with the swelling, maybe some pain relief in here. Oh, one more thing. I think I do want to add one of these bigger muslins after all, just in case I want or need to nurse when we have guests over. Let's just pop that in here. I will probably end up getting myself one of those like LV letdown catchers. And that will go in here as well, but I don't have that yet. I've been advised not to buy anything until we know <laughs> um, how my supply comes in and everything. So yeah, that's gonna come eventually and go in here as well. But I think for now, for now it looks good. That was a bit of a challenge. Um, I don't think these bed razors are a very good design, if I'm completely honest. Apparently it's what's used, so we, you know, try to make it work. I don't think I've mentioned yet, but yeah, we are setting up the nursery as the labor room <laughs> for several reasons. I would love to give birth in the birthing pool, but one of the biggest advantages of a home birth is that you get all the options. I just want to give myself all the variation I might need. And there's always a possibility that I might end up on the bed for whatever reason. I want to make sure that I can give birth on a bed if necessary or if the midwife requires it. So this is the bed that we've set up for that. This room is more spacious than our bedroom but most importantly it has better lighting. Our bedroom has lovely ambient light which is perfect for winding down in the evening. Not so perfect when you're trying to stitch up someone's nether regions in the middle of the night. I just feel like this room will be much more practical. Also here we can just set up all of the medical equipment and everything way in advance and I don't have to look at it every night. We can just just close the door and you know once it begins I can come in here and have everything ready and also that way once I've given birth I can just directly hop into my own bed with baby and you know while this is being cleaned up and I think that would be really nice as well so we have the luxury of a second bed and I think it would just be really nice to make use of that so that is why we're setting up here raising this bed oh and also our own bed is um, like covered in, with fabric like we have an upholstered bed and I just feel like this will be easier to clean <laughs> if needed, so. I feel like we have a lot of room now underneath the bed, so I might try and pop those boxes that we unboxed at the beginning of the video under here, just so that I can continue decorating the nursery and make it look all nice and nursery-like. And then we can set up all the medical equipment once we get a little bit closer to my due date, because it's definitely still a few weeks away. Then all there's left to do in terms of preparation for now, I think, is to start packing my hospital bag and then to check online where I can rent a birthing pool and a tense machine. Suitcase. So let's start with my clothing. So first of all, I definitely want to bring a robe to the hospital. Then something for me to wear. So I think I'm gonna just bring this tracksuit <laughs> that I have. Nice and comfortable wide pants that are big enough. I still fit into them even now, eight months pregnant. Those are definitely coming. And then the top has a zipper down the front, which I think would be really handy as well. Slippers, bath slippers. Maybe I should put those on the bottom actually. I think it's good to note that if you give birth in a hospital in the Netherlands, unless there is some kind of emergency or you've given birth in the middle of the night, they will send you home after a few hours. So you really won't get to stay there very long. So I don't expect I will need a lot. Baby needs some clothes as well. I have a few sets of clothing here in different sizes so that, you know, hopefully something <laughs> will fit no matter what size baby comes out of. Oh, <laughs> no. This is slightly larger. This here is tiny. We have this tiny little set. Oh, it's just adorable. And then just to be sure I'm bringing a simpler set of baby grows and some pants in case he has long skinny legs. 
because you never know. So I think I'm gonna just bundle those together by size. And then I need to pack some hats to go with this as well and socks. A little hat, socks. Let's see if I can find some little bags to pop this in. I'm gonna bring a muslin just in case. Maybe you can use it as a blanket or something. And then an actual baby blanket for the car ride. I'm gonna pack these really nice comfy socks for myself. I'm not bringing an extra nursing bra. I've been wearing exclusively nursing bras for months now, so I'll probably be wearing one. Uh, but I am bringing this super stretchy extra bra just in case I wanna wear something else, which yeah, this will easily stretch <laughs> enough for nursing as well, in case I want to change into something. I think I need something for sleeping, some kind of sleeping garment. Yeah, this nightgown should work. It's open on the bottom, which I think will be really nice. So let's pop that here. Besides the robe, I'm adding this to baby's clothes. I just feel like we need something warmer for him to wear on the journey home. Something that can just go over his clothes. So let me just bring this little knitted jacket. All right, toiletries for me. What I'm definitely bringing is deodorant. You know what, maybe I'll just bring the big bag. This already has some travel travel size deodorant in it, my toothbrush, facial cleanser, oh that's nice, shower gel, I want to bring a different one, but I'm definitely bringing shower gel, this is a nicer scent, bringing that one, a travel size moisturizer, some makeup remover wipes, a hand sanitizer, definitely earplugs, a hair tie with bobby pins if I want to get my bangs out of my face, I'm gonna bring a little washcloth just in case I want to wash myself and I'm not sure if they have these at the hospital. I think that's more or less it for the toiletries. I always have a hand balm in my handbag. Yeah, I think we're good here for now. I'm gonna bring something that plays music and a camera and I'm gonna have to make sure as the date rolls near that both of these are charged and there's an SD card in the camera and everything. And aside from this, I think I'm gonna print out a list of all of the other necessities that need to be packed but can't be packed in advance. Like obviously like driver's license, insurance card, um, phone, phone chargers, things like that. The birth plan needs to go in here as well, but we haven't written it yet. <laughs> so once that is done, I will print it out, put a copy of it in here, as well as a list, a physical list of things that need to be packed last minute so that my husband can do that once contractions start. Now it looks like the big box of medical equipment isn't gonna fit under the bed. This definitely will, so I'm just gonna <laughs> shove this under the bed here with the car seat and we'll be good. Oh, it feels really good to have all of that done. Now I'm sure I will keep adding stuff to this as time goes by. As I mentioned, we still have a few weeks to go, but I would also love to hear if you guys have any tips, things that I should definitely pack in either my breastfeeding caddy or my hospital bag. Keeping in mind that all of the medical stuff and uh, most of my like personal care stuff will be provided by the hospital. I'm definitely planning on packing some snacks in there as well, although, there will be food available there. But yeah, just to be sure, I think I wanna pack some snacks as well. I would love to hear if there was anything that you were very, very glad to have <laughs> during your hospital birth. But for now, I think we can say most of the prep has been checked off and I can fully focus on trying to find the best price to rent a birthing pool and a dance machine. <laughs> because that's something I definitely still need to do, but it's a bit early still, they can't send it to me yet. But it'll be nice to know where to order once the time comes. So I'm gonna get on that. Thank you guys so much for being here. I really hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will see if I can answer them. Of course, I don't know everything. It's my first birth, but I'll see what I can do. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel to stay updated on all of the other stuff that will be going on in the upcoming months. If you would like to support me through Patreon, there is a link in the description box below. It's a huge help for me. Thank you so much for your support, guys. There is another video here, right here, that I think you might also enjoy. You can go watch next. Thank you so much once again for being here, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!